There's an inescapable feeling of barriers crumbling in the once rigid genre of country and western music. R&B megastar Beyoncé is currently number one in the UK and US singles charts with the infectious hoedown Texas Hold M, making her the first black woman to top the Billboard Hot 100 with a country track. Somber songstress Lana Del Rey will soon release her first country album. And just last week, Tennessee musician Morgan Wallen announced that he'll headline London's Hyde Park in July, a slot usually reserved for household name rockers such as Bruce Springsteen and the Rolling Stones. Not that the genre's fissioning has pleased everyone. An Oklahoma radio station initially refused to play Beyoncé's record because she wasn't a country singer, while a patron of a country dive bar in her hometown of Houston last week rather coldly told a newspaper, I guarantee you Beyoncé has never stepped foot in here. All of which made the opening day of this weekend's Country 2 Country Festival a tantalizing prospect. With a mammoth rotating lineup across London, Glasgow and Belfast over a three-day weekend. C2C, which was first held in the UK in 2013, is proof in itself of country's popularity over here. The London leg was split across 10 stages dotted around the cavernous O2 complex, think the Millennium Dome Festival in Estetson. But was there a sense that country music is seizing its moment as it yeehaws into a new era? Largely, yes. Although the O2 will never be cozy, the place was packed, families, couples, massive belt buckles galore, and there was a definite buzz. Singer Colby Calais set the thematic template on the Radio 2 stage with songs about Nashville and optimism amid heartbreak. I limbered up for the evening with a spot of line dancing naturally in bar called The Wayside. The electric slide dance was wonderfully therapeutic, like Prairie Tai Chi many hundreds of people were doing it, surprising even the compare, and a huge queue formed outside. A captive audience perhaps, but what was once naff and niche is now wholesomely embraced. Chapel Hart are a female vocal trio from Mississippi. Sisters Danica and Devin Hart and their cousin Tree Swindle tore it up on the spotlight stage with extraordinary a cappella harmonies. A cover of Dolly Parton's Jolene was followed by their repost called You Can Have Him Jolene, in which Parton's wayward lover was gladly handed over. It was a neat subversion. Chapel Hart are ones to watch. The most traditional set was from Grammy-winning Carly Pierce. She was introduced by Radio 2's whispering Bob Harris, who told 20,000 people that he has three tiny tattoos, the things you learn. Her breakup ballad, What He Didn't Do, A Sucker Punch in a Velvet Glove, was met with wave after wave of applause that rendered Pierce speechless. Headliner Kane Brown best summed up country's new dawn. The Chattanooga-born 30-year-old's entrance music was Beyoncé's Crazy in Love Nice Touch and Break Stuff by new metal monster's Limp Bizkit. He burst onto the stage amid flames and lasers. Brown mixed traditional country tropes, fiddles, songs about drink and whiskey, with flashes of heavy metal and Frank Ocean-style program. With a white mother and an African-American father. Who is also part Cherokee, Brown is not your conventional country artist while 15 of country music's 20 top-selling artists of all time are male, all of them are white. I'm a bit different. I'm the outsider in country music, he said. Brown explained that he was nervous, and you could tell. But on tracks such as Homesick and Bury Me in Georgia he was spellbinding. The set was a little much for some traditionalists, who left early, but Brown was proof that the genre, and the parameters it sets itself, is indeed evolving.